they want to reserve this diagnosis for people that do not look like you. You know the image that they have. You know the image that's already in your head. Don't at me about this. Uh, that's Norm. He's a pizza boy. Pizza boy. A pizza boy? Hey, hey pizza, pizza boy. boy. I worked with this lady and she called me pizza boy. After I corrected her on that boy part, I had to inquire why she called me pizza boy. She said, every time I see you, you're always eating pizza. The funny thing about that, this lady swore she was so observant. I only had pizza on Fridays. The other days that we worked together, I had chicken and rice. But the day that I had pizza, that seemed to stick out in her mind. So to her, I was pizza boy. But more on her later. The truth will set you free. But first, it'll piss you off. This is your only warning. Be your fucking self. Stop masking. Stop doing all the shit that you've been conditioned to do to make it in life, to get by at work, to keep your job, to make that promotion. Be your fucking self. Remember that you are paying these people to evaluate you. Go in there. If you need to fucking stem, goddamn stem. If you if need you to repeat, repeat every word that they word say that back they say to you back because to you, it feels because good it feels in the moment, then motherfucking do that shit. That's the only way you're going to be able to pass the evaluation is if they're able to truly evaluate you with no masks on. They want to see that 3 a.m. version of yourself, the version when nobody else is around, when it's just you and your thoughts, when it's just you and you can't sleep. You got to show them that version of you. That's what they want to see. You got to say, you know what? Fuck what you think. I don't collect goddamn trains. I'm not Timmy, but what I do is this. So if you see some fucking pans on the goddamn table, you want to line them up, line them motherfucking bitches up. Line them up. If you want to clap your hands, if you want to flap them bitches, do that shit. If you want to turn around in a circle three times, get up and do that shit. You've got to be your authentic self, and that's what they fail to sell you because they want to reserve this diagnosis for people that do not look like you. You know the image that they have. You know the image that's already in your head. Don't at me about this. You know the image that they're trying to maintain. They love attaching trauma and PTSD to people that are black. You could have lived one of the best lives, but they will tell you any type of form of depression. Oh, that's trauma. That's PTSD. And you know what? As you get older, it probably is some trauma there. Because you've always been told that you weren't this, you were that. You always had people from the outside looking at you, trying to tell you who you were, as if you knowing you isn't valid, as if somebody else's opinion on you weighs more than what you actually think of your fucking self. So here's some tips to help you with that so you're not seen for just your trauma. Don't talk about any type of friendships that you've had that have went bad, because depending on how you speak on the situation, you may come across as if you're holding on to it. And if you present that you're holding on to it, then they're definitely going to label that as a traumatic experience. The truth of the matter may be that you had friendships, but once they saw your quirks and they were just like, nah, this nigga crazy, they dipped. You can't talk about that, though, because... Those type of things, that's like dopamine to, to the doctor's mind. They're like, oh shit. Like they got a bingo card that they're just like waiting to fill out with you. They're not really seeing you. Chances are you're an adult of a certain age. And so you know that you don't, you can't just rearrange people's desks. But that's apparently what they want you to do. They want you to break out of all those social norms that we're supposed to follow. But in this moment being evaluated, it's like forget everything that you knew. And never mind that the person that's assessing you has a horrible cough and they've been touching everything in sight. If you use the hand sanitizer before eating your snack that they provided, they're going to say, you've got OCD. You see what they're doing here, right? They're baiting you to give you other diagnoses. That's not why you're there to be evaluated. All because of how they're showing up and the way they're presenting themselves. Because this evaluation process is an observation of your behavior while getting you to do tasks. And it's seeing how you perform under pressure. But you just think that you're there to play with some blocks and Legos and listen to somebody tell you a story about some flying fucking frogs. If you have a set routine, talk about your routines. Don't talk about what bothers you when your routine don't go right. Talk about things about the perfect day. Talk about it in the sense of if it was a perfect day for you, what would the day look like? Don't talk about that situation when you went to Starbucks and you waited in the wrong line because the barista told you to go over there for your sliced lemon ice cake when you needed to go to the other counter and the person that was preparing your fucking cake didn't even bother to call your name. So you're standing there for 15 minutes and, and with this anxiety that's building. You can't talk about that because then you'll just be seen as the anxiety that they see. Then they'll likely point out your ADHD jumping from one story to the next. They want to see you, but you can't give them any little blips that will make them think this is your norm. Because if it stood out in your mind enough to bring it up in the evaluation, they're going to think that it's something you're holding on to. And it may be questions that you've never even thought about. Like they start asking you about jobs. So you're like, I never thought about that. Or I haven't thought about that in years, but now I'm thinking about it. But you led me here. You did this. I can't tell you to put on an act because this isn't something that you can act out, but you just have to really be yourself. You have to, if you're fidgety that day, you have to let yourself fidget. You can't mask, even though it's going to be uncomfortable and hard as hell to not want to do that because it's four hours with a stranger. And if you're internalizing yourself and if you're self-aware, 
You're going to be thinking, is this person judging me? Well, they shouldn't be judging you. They should just be assessing you, looking at your behavior, taking note of your grooming standard, which again, all that's subjective because one of my grooming is better than yours. But hopefully they'll see you the way they need to see you to make a proper assessment. And I'm just not sure that you'll get that. Not without taking out a piece of paper and making a list of all the things that you think make you autistic. There's going to be a part when they ask you, is there anything else that you like for me to know? Take that time to give them that list or go over that list with them. Also, be observant of the surroundings of your area, because if it looks like your Nana's house when all the grandkids come over and they've got a lot of toys and not enough reading material for adults, it might be a good indicator that they are not experienced with assessing adults. The evaluation process would be easier if we had other autistic people doing the assessing because it's interesting to me that I understand the spectrum and from communicating online with other autistic people, we just seem to understand the spectrum of we're not all the same way, but we can see it in other people. Being able to recognize the extremely gifted to those with high support needs, if that makes sense. Being able to see the shared traits that we have with others that are like us and but I'm saying characters as in when TV does a really good job of casting and writing for the part of someone that's on the spectrum and you say, yes, that's me. Or you pick up on a joke that nobody else in the room is laughing at. It's those type of things. Hello, pizza boy. Sharon and I worked together for eight months. We were in the same training class, so we had lunch at the same time. Though we didn't necessarily eat together, she saw that I had chicken and rice every day except for Friday. Sharon was ex-military working as a claims adjuster. She prided herself on being hyper detail focused. I gave Sharon a ride home twice. Both times she commented on the smell of my chicken and rice and said how much she loved rosemary chicken and she was probably going to make some when she got home. But for whatever reason to Sharon, I was pizza boy. Sharon and I worked close together, so there were other things that Sharon could have remembered about me. But for whatever reason, Sharon took one thing that I did on an occasion and made that become my whole personality. Sharon was let go. Sharon, despite her training and her eye for detail, she put the same notes on several different unrelated claims. What Sharon did was she looked at the person's name, the make and model of their car, and their address. And based on those things, if you had a name that was... Sharon was declining your claim. Sharon was guarding that pocketbook like it was hers. Even with supporting documents like a police report, claim denied. Like all American institutions, medicine has been shaped by a legacy of racial injustice. Five studies examining over 100,000 students from up to 113 schools found racial minority students receive significantly fewer honors grades in core clerkships compared to white students. Grading disparities can disadvantage minority students when applying to competitive residency programs and may contribute to a lack of diversity in these fields. Naturally, that lack of diversity will also reflect in how we are treated. A report titled Understanding Healthcare Students' Experiences of Racial Bias shows that racial and ethnic minority group healthcare students experience and witness racial prejudice and stereotyping from academic and clinical staff. They adjust their behavior to not be seen as those stereotypes to separate themselves from that group over there and endure increased stress to prove intellectual ability, sometimes ignoring their own understanding of the groups that they belong to while reinforcing what they've been taught, making them feel more comfortable in their position of gatekeeping. Medical practitioners take an oath to do no harm, but evidence shows that doctors and the greater population exist the same levels of implicit bias. Implicit bias is the tendency to unconsciously associate groups or category markers and a negative evaluation. Although she was a minority as well, she had her bias that she brought into the practice. She has a child that's nonverbal and she doesn't believe that genius is a part of the spectrum. Hell no, I'm not saying that I'm a genius. I'm just saying that she also only believes that there is a very limited range of what's on the spectrum. Still, she got 20 years in the game. She still felt that way. Yeah, because you remember she said that therapists and psychiatrists, that they weren't the same and that therapists, they don't know what they're talking about when it comes to this type of stuff. Remember only to come back later and to say the same thing that your therapist said, right? Yeah, but you know, she said she didn't trust them. No, she said you have to take their diagnosis with a grain of salt. I hope all the doctors who misdiagnose people of color in particular have to face some type of consequences at the pearly gates. If you reserve a diagnosis for pale skin and automatically attach trauma to darker skin, I hope there's like a special VIP section for you in hell. I was misdiagnosed by someone brown and that's why I really have a problem with the whole black and brown statement. And there you have it. That's one of my bias. I hope with these tips, somebody sees you for your chicken and rice and not just the pizza that you have on Fridays. That they see you for the ride that you gave them. That they remember, you know, that they just remember your name and not call you something, some, some shit based on the food you ate. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. I'll see you later. Bouncing around, bouncing around, bouncing, bouncing around, bouncing around, bouncing, bouncing around, bouncing around, bouncing.